Hey, what's going on, guys? Gold Gas here with another episode of Gas Boilers 101. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to recharge an internal heating expansion vessel. If you enjoy, please drop a like. And if you want to see more service bits and gas works, be sure to subscribe and check out my channel. Do not use the pressure relief valve to drain down the boiler or as the open end to check the vessel's pre-charge as it's likely to let by after if you do that. So try and avoid that if you can. Before you begin, if you want to give the vessel a little tap on the air side, so the side with the Schrader valve, if it sounds hollow, it's probably air. If it doesn't, then it might be full of water. Also, take off the cap and push the Schrader valve to see if you get any water come out of the air side. If you do, there's no point carrying on at this point and you need to replace the expansion vessel. You need to isolate the boiler using the flow and return isolation valves. Uh, this will ensure when you drain the boiler, you only drain the boiler and not the whole heating system. All modern boilers will have a drain off. Uh, most of the older ones, some of the really old ones won't. And you'll have to find another way to drain down, either using a radiator or cracking a nut on one of the isolators. Um, but if there's an F&E tank, a tank in your loft, you would have to shut the water up to that as well, if it's not pressurised. Once the border is drained, make sure the drain off is open still, as you must have an open end when pumping the vessel, otherwise it won't pump it up properly. There's usually a label on the vessel which will say what the pre-charge is. It will usually be between 0.5 and 1, but check each manufacturer is different. Most glowworms are 0.5, most Worcesters are 0.75, Alphas are 1. If there is no label or you can't see the label, check the manufacturer's instructions always or give them a call. Remove the cap on the Schrader valve and attach your foot pump to see what the pressure is inside. If it needs topping up or charging, then pump away. Always pump a little bit more if you have a sort of cheaper foot pump and you're going to lose a bit of the air when you pull it off. But pump a little bit more. So if you need one, get about 1.1 and then when you pull the pump nozzle off, you will lose a little bit and it will go back down to one. Before you put the cap back on, I like to put a bit of leak detector on the end of the Schrader valve or you can put a little bit of washing up liquid or whatever it is you want to use just so it shows if it's letting by, it will bubble if it does just so it doesn't lose that pre-charge you just put in. If it doesn't, put the cap back on. Open the flow and return valve if you've shut them off, if your boiler has them. And so then we could start putting pressure in via the filling loop or if there was an F and E tank, we could open, open the isolator to that and start refilling the boiler. If it's a combi boiler or if it has an internal AAV, if it's a system boiler as well, then just make sure that air vent is open. And perhaps you might need to bleed the pump so that doesn't burn out. And uh, if there's a drain off on top of the burner on some of the boilers, you need to bleed the air through that as well. If that's all good, you feel your boiler pressure up. If you're using the filling loop and you've got a gauge, go to about one to 1.5 with the heating system water cold. I like to check the vessels on every service because they always go 
and especially if you're going to a breakdown and there's pressure problems is the first thing you go to as it may have ruined the pressure relief valve already um, you could always go outside and check the discharge pipe or even disconnect it from under the boiler and see if it's letting by you may need to replace this I also like to write on the vessel whether I've charged it or whether it needed charging and the date just so the next engineer has a bit of insight to the, the history of it. That about does it for this episode. If you've enjoyed, don't forget to drop a like. And if there's anything you want to see, like how to service a boiler or a question about a particular boiler, even one that I haven't shown yet, leave a comment below and I should get back to you. Cheers, folks. Stay safe.